So let's make a form for a ticket ordering website. To keep our code nice and clean, let's put everything in a function here. Let's see. First, we need a form tag. Post is the best one to use. You can also use get, but post enables you to send more data, for instance. Then we need a processing page. It's always good to use a processing page instead of using the same one. The reason is that if you use a processing page and then come back to the form, you will avoid the error where F5, or reload, actually sends the form again. So let's say if you have a form that deletes a record in, or deletes the last record in the database and you click the button and then you reload while well, you've deleted two records. And it's also confusing for the user. So that's why we have a form processing page. So we have our form tag here. And basically what I'm going to do is make a table where in the left column I have the labels and in the right column I have the form elements. So let's start that here. The table, let's call it, and simply table. Let's end the table. Okay, and now we have for each piece of information that we want, for instance, first name, last name, number of tickets, we want a row. I'm going to put this in a function just to keep the code cleaner. Let's call the function, for instance, display row. And first we need first name that's going to be on the left. And this is going to be on the right. For instance, input type text. The name of the variable that we're going to send is first name. So let's make display row down here. Function display row. Okay. So what are we going to do in display row? Well, first of all, we're going to send left and right. Okay. And then we're simply going to have a TR tag. That is the table row. And then we're going to have a TD tag. And the first one will hold what's on the left. We're going to copy this, and the second one will be what's on the right. So we should be able to see something so far as, well, let's actually try. Order tickets, order tickets, yes. We see nothing, of course, because everything's in a function. We have to echo something out. Let's echo display form. There it is. And what do we have? Super, first name, and a box. That's a good start for a form. We probably need a colon here. Yeah. So what else do we need from customers if they're filling out a form for tickets for our theater? Last name. And since everything is in a function, that should work just the same. Another advantage of having everything in a function like this, of course, is if you want to put some, you know, like bold face the labels, then you do it in one spot and they're all bold. But let's continue on with our form here. We also need, for instance, number of tickets. Number of tickets. And we'll call that variable number of tickets. And let's see what it looks like. Super. So let's do some formatting though, because this form is kind of plain. For instance, let's take our table here and let's put a kind of style in it. For instance, let's say background color beige. Okay, looks nice. We need some padding though. Padding 10 pixels looks very nice. And how about a border? Border one pixel dashed nice gray. So that looks very nice. It looks very nice in Firefox. Let's look at it in Internet Explorer. Let's copy this here. So it looks different. Hmm. We can't have that. What can we do?
Many programmers bang their heads on this issue. The problem basically is that CSS doesn't explicitly say where padding is supposed to be, if it's around the cell or inside the table, etc. And so it so happens that Internet Explorer and Firefox don't treat padding the same if you put it in the table tag. I have a solution for this, and I'll show you what it is. I'm going to say here... I'm going to call a function display nice form begin. And I'm going to take this down here. And I'm going to make the function here display nice form begin. And put it in here. So, and then I'm going to put instead of this here, I'm going to put display nice form end. And down here, I'll make this function display nice form end. So let's change it just a little bit. We'll change it to uh, blue so we recognize it. See if our changes are being made here. Yes, and it's exactly the same. Change it back. And now I'm going to do a little trick. I'm going to put a table inside a table. The reason why I'm using tables, actually, instead of divs, is with tables, you can later expand the size of your cells, the input cells, and the table will expand with it. That's a very nice feature of tables, whereas with divs, it's harder for you to make it dynamic like that. So I've got this table here, and I'm going to say the inner table has a style of margin which is the same in explorer and in firefox that's the trick like this padding doesn't matter anymore so so now we have an inner table which has a margin of 10 that's the outside and an outer table which has our formatting so now we need to actually add these tags real quick and that should be it so let's take a look firefox something happened here the problem is is that i don't have these tags here. We'll just put them in. So that's how it looks in Firefox. And that's how it looks in Explorer. Firefox, Explorer, fixed. So to complete our beginning form, all we need now is a button. Let's put the button in here. Button. Let's call this yeah button, okay. And then we just need to put the HTML button. Now, the button is actually also going to be in a row. So we'll display row. Nothing is going to be on the left side. We want the button under the right side data input boxes. The button is a type, uh, input type, input type, submit. And for our application, we'll call it order tickets. That will be the name on the button. Close the tag, and it's got a problem here on oh, the semicolon. Okay, now it doesn't have a problem anymore. That's very nice. So let's look at it. Firefox. Explore. Nice. And there we have a cross-browser, nice-looking form done in PHP in a way that uses functions so that we can expand on this form and make it more complicated, which we'll do in the following films.